Cheers, Hello. ooh, nice mug. Thank you. Dennis the Menace. What is it? Dennis the Menace. Dennis oh. the Menace, oh my goodness, that's so cool. Yeah. And the Nasher, comic. of course. A comic that oh. I used to, I used to uh, read when I was little. I can't, yeah, there we go. Yeah, me too. Go. All the time, <laughs> I loved Dennis the Menace. Uh, the Beano, I used to uh, read that's the right. Beano a lot. Yeah. Hello everyone. And, uh, Is there any, yeah. anyone there uh, writing the comments? Hello. Not yet, but hopefully okay. soon. Okay. What was the other ones? The 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 school kids, the Backstreet. Not. That's the one. Is it the Backstreet Boys? The, no. uh, the Bash no, Street Kids. Sort of, the Bash Street. <laughs> That's the band, isn't it? Yeah. That I, um, <laughs> tell me, tell me. Oh, that's terrible. That's really yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> Never mind. Um, all right. So, uh, nobody on yet. Ah, okay. Someone's on. Hello. 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 How hello. are you? Where are Regent. you? We're in Milan. We're really bored, but I guess. Are you? Guess, I'm. I'm all right. I've been keeping busy. Mm. I've been keeping pretty busy, so I'm not that bored actually. I guess uh, I'm getting. I guess I'm getting used to. Oh, Rosa, you, hang on, there we go. You're freezing up a little bit there. Uh-oh, is that my connection or yours? I don't know. So I think, yeah, hello? <laughs> I'm moving. Hello. Um, just checking that everything's in. <laughs> So we have Antonio from Turin. All right. Hello, Antonio. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Welcome to this focus mm. 10 to 13. Paula, welcome. We have a nice, fun focus to do today. Yeah. Where is Paula? Where's Paula watching from? Okay, I so. wanted to say before Rosa that I'm I mean quarantine is difficult but I'm getting used to living in uh it, like inside and I'm getting used to not having to go out. I don't know are you are you getting used to it mm. Rosa? Yeah. Slowly. Yeah, I mean yeah. Yeah, I miss the fresh air every now and again, but <laughs> um, mm. but yeah. That's a phrase that we're looking Hi, at. Hi, yes, Paula from Filthy. Nice. Hello, Paula from Filthy. Rose and Phil also from Filthy. We've got a Filthy crew going on. Nice. Yes. All right, so. Um, we've chosen a focus called Lost in Translation today, guys. Mm. Just put it up there. Lost in Translation. Have you... This have is you, a cool expression. Yeah. It's also a film. Also a film with Bill Murray, isn't it? Yeah. Fantastic film. I saw that a really really long time ago so i actually don't remember what it's about i remember it's got bill murray in it and a, a young woman uh scarlett johansson oh really was it her yeah when she was uh oh. 17 years old oh wow okay yeah. and but i really don't remember anything about um 
the the story well it's about i don't remember yeah it's about um two two americans that end up in tokyo for one reason or another but they they find it very difficult to live there because of all the culture shock so um okay. they they sort of because they're they're both in a strange situation they become quite fond of each other and they have this close connection and it's a very beautifully made so a friendship movie. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they build a friendship because they're in the same situation together. Yeah. If anybody at home has any ideas what it means, or if you if you think you know what it means when something is lost in translation, um, please write it. Yeah. In the comments for us. Exactly. Yeah. So, well, the film you just explained kind of uh, <laughs> gave gave a, an idea mm -hmm. of what it means. Nation, right? And yeah, translation. And I happen to use it quite often when something gets lost in translation. Yeah, maybe if you use Google so, Translate, if you use Google Translate, some things will get lost in translation along the way. It's not. A, I always tell my students <laughs> use a different, use a different um, tool. Um, anyone else? I mean, yeah, Google Translate's word. okay for a word, individual words, but it's terrible for set sentences. It just yeah. doesn't know what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. You always have to correct it. Mm. All right. Well, I've looked up lost in translation in the dictionary just to check that I understand it correctly. Mm -hmm. And it says here um, of a word or words having lost the or lacking the full subtlety of meaning or significance when translated from one language to another. Basically, when something loses its meaning when it's translated in one language from one language to another. Like my friend tried explaining a few French idioms to me, but I'm afraid they were lost in translation. So maybe if you tell a joke sometimes, yeah, it mm. doesn't doesn't work in from Italian to English or English to Italian. It gets the meaning gets lost in translation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Losing the meaning of words when translating from one language to another. Yeah, but the, the I use reverso. Okay, mm -hmm. Paolo, good. <laughs> All right. Um, reverso. Yeah. Um, context reverso. It, it takes. They were. Uh, Yeah, word good. reference is good for an individual word. Hello. Yeah. Um, yeah but I, we're having phrase, some problems with the connection. With, yeah. Okay. Context reversal takes like the entire sentence and checks it in many different um, Italian or English or French or whatever. It checks them in different articles, which mm. I think it's a good tool. I like context reversal. Yeah. Okay. Ah, that's good. That's really useful to know. So nice. Yeah, the movie is is absolutely incredible. If you haven't seen Lost in Translation with Bill Murray, watch it. Also, because the concept of Lost in Translation is very similar to what we're looking at today, um, going to a different culture and and um, not dealing very well with the with the culture shock that they have there with mm. the culture a culture clash. Okay. Yeah, culture shock. <laughs> that's it. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're going to talk about in this focus mm -hmm. activity is mood moving abroad and prepositions. So you would be most likely to be lost in translation uh, when you are in a foreign country. Exactly. Uh, or 
talking to, having conversations with people from different cultures from yours. Um, yeah. And then we're going to look at some prepositions as well, which is always useful because I find it really a uh, tricky part of English because you never, you know, that's just what they have to be. There's no, <laughs> no sort of thing. You, you have to learn them and that's it. Exactly. So, um, okay, we're not so we're not video. going to watch. Hmm? We're not watching the video. So just uh, no. click a couple of times and then there's um there's another question. It talks more generally. If you exactly. keep clicking, there you go. Four and five. We can okay. discuss these for sure. Mm -hmm. So if you move to another country, where do you think you'd find it most difficult to adapt to life? Where would you find it easiest and why? And do you think some people's ex uh, some people experience culture shock when visiting your country? What aspects of your country would surprise them? Nice. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we could first of all think if you could live in any country, Rosa, which country would you live in? Ooh. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't been to every country, so it's very <laughs> hard to say. I would go um, I would go to the north to like Scandinavia because I think northern Europe have um, a good quality of life and the the culture is quite similar to British culture. Mm. I think you'd move south, right? Yes, I would move to a warm country. <laughs> uh, a bamboo hut on a nice paradise beach would be enough for me actually. <laughs> Lovely. So just fishing and stuff. <laughs> well, um, but where would be the it, where would it be the most difficult to adapt to life? Mm. I I think I think I probably wouldn't enjoy um, places like Dubai or United uh, Arab Emirates. I don't think uh, I would find myself very comfortable in uh, in these countries just because it is such. Uh, a big culture gap that I don't think my, I could uh, I could overcome that easily. I think mm. I would be pretty miserable there. Yeah, um, I guess the way that women are treated, uh, right? Not all women, but um, no, not all that, women. Women. But you know, well, mostly because of the alcohol, guys. Come on, ah. <laughs> aperitivo. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah maybe. I, mean, I was thinking of somewhere like London, just because of the amount of people there, um, and you know the the hustle and bustle of everyday life. I found it difficult to move to Milan, but London, I think, would be ten times, uh, you know, ten times more chaotic for me. So um, I think I find it difficult to adapt there, being from like a small small town. What about you, Paula and Antonio? Where would you find it difficult to adapt to life and why? Which city, which country? Mm. And where do you, um, I yeah. I'm a warm place, but not far from Italy because I don't, we're waiting for the rest of the sentence. I was just thinking, yeah, um, What would be difficult? I wouldn't be able to. Uh, I won't be able adapting to a different culture. Hmm. Okay, so I would move. Hmm. That's our first preposition of the day. Move to. Yeah. A warm place. But not so far from Italy because I won't be able adapting to a different culture. Hmm, Paola, careful, huh? <laughs> it's good. I. Sorry. So yeah, then we need the, the negative of words, don't we? Word mm -hmm. becomes wouldn't. 
I wouldn't be able to adapt. I'd be able to adapt. Able is um, like a an adjective, and with an adjective, we often use a preposition to. Okay, able to. It, like it would be nice to live, for example, or. Uh, okay, so I wouldn't be able to live. Mm -hmm. So that. you want to use the wouldn't here, not yeah. the will not. Yeah. Antonio says, I would like to move to Spain because the culture is similar to ours. China would be uncomfortable for me because their lifestyle is too different. Mm. It really is. Uh, that's a really good sentence, by the way, Antonio. Well done. Yeah, well done. Mm. Well done, both of you, actually. Thank you both for, mm. for responding. What would... So, yeah. Oh, we've lost Philip. Oh, no. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, do you think some people experience culture shock? Have you ever uh, been abroad and experienced culture shock? I know... Uh, or uh, the other way around, do you think that Italy could be shocking for other people? I know <laughs> that, um, when was it? In, uh, in December, when uh, we all went to Sicily for a Mayas uh, uh, teacher conference, uh, all, uh, all, <laughs> all of uh, Philip and Dan, so all of my colleagues, Hello. Hello. That's okay. I was just telling uh, our, our viewers that uh, you guys found Sicily and, in particular, Italian traffic to be absolutely shocking. Yeah. <laughs> in compared to British traffic. Yeah. So, I guess Ita Italy can be a pretty shocking place in terms of culture shock, but mm -hmm. to me, Italy is really, really not that bad because places have been to countries where the traffic is a million times worse. <laughs> and so the Italian traffic um, wasn't that bad, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic's one thing. Um, you know, well, like, because all the, yeah, all the cars in Palermo have scratches and bumps and things on them, which is, which is <laughs> quite a shock. You were looking out the window like, let's yeah. find a car with those scratches. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I was thinking oh, of another thing that Italians do that British people don't do. It's, I think also French people and Spanish, when they, when they greet each other, um, Italians... Kissing. Yeah, they generally cut kiss and hug. And if you see an English person, it's basically like, hi. We don't really mm. touch each other. We certainly don't kiss each other, especially if you're especially if you're male. It's a bit um men don't like to show yeah. their feminine side or like a sense to be sensitive. <laughs> I guess the the warmer the country is, the warmer the people are as well. Yeah. I tend to find that uh, a sort of um, general truth for places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even exactly. within a country, you know, even within Italy, uh, as Paola is saying, Sicily is very different from north of Italy, but it's really beautiful. It is. Uh, but even within the people, there is a very big difference in in character and personality, I think. Um, All right, shall we move on? So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And I think, uh, uh, 
So, culture shock in Vietnam. I moved to Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam about six months ago. I thought the whole process would be a walk in the park and that I'd be living off uh, the life of Riley. But I found it really hard to get used to. Some of the customs here have really peeved me. Recently, I visited, an I visited the Independence Palace with my girlfriend. I was admiring the texture. And passerby, and a passerby, disapprovingly shouted at me. Also, last week, I was standing in the metro with my arms crossed and received a similar reaction. The etiquette here, although these customs grate on me sometimes, I'm getting accustomed to the country and I'm having a ball meeting new people. Okay. Okay, big long text here, colorful language. Yeah. Mm. We have to find synonyms in text for easy, comfortable life to annoy and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime. So right in the in the text. This part basically if you see any language. Yeah. Um, write in the comments if you, if you can find them. Mm -hmm. Um, have you been to Vietnam, Rosa? Uh, yes. <laughs> I lived in Vietnam for three years. So, so, but... I am not really sure why they shouted with their arms crossed. Uh, that's not anything that I ever encountered. Maybe in the south of Vietnam, I lived in the north. So again, maybe that's why I don't know these. Um, I'm not sure why that was offensive, but it is true that they have uh some very different um <laughs> um how do you say not traditions but just uh ways of of doing things you know in a in a restaurant you have to shout really loud at the waiter for them to come and give you drinks or food <laughs> and if you don't shout they won't come wow so, yeah, it's really it's really hard at the beginning. You're like, oh, am I, am I? And then after a while, you're like, yeah, am I? <laughs> <laughs> you just get you get the hang of it, and and they come, and they're like, oh, yeah, they're, it's all normal. You just have to shout at them really loud to grab their attention. All right, yeah. Antonio so, and peeve. Are you asking what peeved means? Peeves is something that uh, annoys you a little bit, um, which is probably one of our answers. This one, right? So a walk in the park, another nice yeah. one is a, a piece of cake. Yeah. Drive someone up the wall, Antonia's saying, to annoy. Antonia, yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. Things. Antonia's got a really nice uh, landscape. Some oh, yeah. mountains in the back. Is it a volcano? That looks like a Where's volcano. From Turin. Nice. All right, so to drag someone out of the wall, how about the car? I wonder if you guys can find comfortable. Hmm. To 
drive you up the wall. That's a really, really nice expression. Also to drive someone, drive, drive me nuts. That's yeah. another way. Drive me nuts. You're driving me nuts tonight, right now. Oh, thanks. It's a mountain in Sardinia. Cool. Uh, driving okay. someone uh, nuts. Let's, let's, let's tell them the answers then. We have some other useful phrases that we're going to use today. Oh, Paula says, admire, enjoy. Hmm. So, I mean, yeah. admire is more like so appreciate, driving. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Annoy. We have uh, Peeve driving up the wall and great on. What is enjoy yeah. is having a ball. Exactly. Is also I, I use that often. Have a ball, enjoy. I'd say that uh, to someone on their birthday, perhaps. Have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. And um, okay, so can you? Do you know where Life of Riley comes from? Because I have no idea, honestly. I can find out. <laughs> uh, Thank God for the internet. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, it's from, it's from it's the Riley. 20th century of, of unknown origin. Um, there is some suggestion of an idea of a, of a gentleman named Mr. Riley enjoying a luxurious, easy life. Um, yeah, okay. so the phrase may, maybe comes from that. Um, what great, is there anything that, that you, you find that people do that really grates on you, uh, Rosa? What? That's another expression I don't really use often, actually. Uh, it really but, gets gets on your nerves. You could maybe yeah, say uh, something that yeah. annoys me is uh, when uh, I don't know when uh, oh, when people I don't know. Are rude. <laughs> I think maybe when people um, maybe uh, when people try to to get on the metro. Um, before the other people have gotten off and push you yeah, that's uh, that really great yeah thing. yeah people that don't wait yeah they try to push you out of the way on a bus or something that's that annoys yeah, me yeah. a bit but yeah. uh, I'm generally pretty chilled out person I don't <laughs> <laughs> okay so what's the most difficult thing for foreigners to get accustomed to in your own country? Have you ever had to get used to something while on a trip abroad? I mean, we've discussed these. Well, fairly... people, I guess people have to get used to um, the weather in the UK, especially if you're from Italy. They have to get used to living in Italy, uh, in, in Italy, in cloudy and rainy weather. Um, for me, it's normal, and I don't mind it. But I think someone that lives in a more in a, a warmer climate would have to get used to that. Mm. Um, have you ever had to get used to something while well, living? Well, yeah, I've had to get used to the weather in Italy because it's so damn hot in in the summer. <laughs> Stop complaining, it's lovely. It's not, it's horrible. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's why, yeah. I mean, yeah, I I have a hard time getting used to the cold, actually. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm like a lizard, I need the heat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's one of the most difficult things to get used to. Um, 
Okay, so we've right, we've yeah. we've used we've used a, a few phrases using "get used to." So, um, to to have a hard time getting used to, or so I find it difficult to get used to. These are common phrases that we use with "get used to." There is a direct translation of "get used to" in Italian, which is "abituarsi." Mm -hmm. To to get used to. And if you use a verb after after get used to, you should use a gerund because um, we we use a preposition which is to get used to doing something. Like in Milan, I had to get used to um, to taking the metro every day. I had to get used to standing in a in a in quarantine. We've had to get used to some changes. In the comments, what have you, what did you get used to? What have you had to get used to in, in the quarantine, mm -hmm. yeah. So I have had to get used to, this is the complete phrase, I have had to get used to. Mm. Dot, dot, dot. You yeah. well, we have a lovely answer from Antonio. Daniel, when I went to, all right, let's have it up. When I went to England, I had to get used to having dinner very early, but unfortunately for two weeks there was a good weather. It's a miracle. Okay, good. <laughs> and the, yeah. the grammar is perfect, really there, Antonio. Well done. Yeah. Apart from uh, this article here, good weather without ah, uh, you don't need that. But apart from ah, that, yes. super duper. Well done. Because it's not un, uh, un bel tempo, it's just bel tempo. Nice weather, yeah. good weather. Mm. Yeah. But super, some, I wonder some, if some. Paola is going to write an example for us or whoever else is watching. I see mm. you. <laughs> Maybe if you also if you moved to a different place, if you if you moved from a different city, what what did you have to get used to? Mm. I remember I had to get used to uh, driving in traffic in Vietnam. Ah. That was that was hard. Uh, kept you kept you you know your adrenaline rush for the day every day going. Kept you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paula, when I went to Ireland, I find it difficult to get used to raining. Ooh. Okay. So that would be in the past, I imagine, Paula. Yeah, so we need to use the past I tense. find, but in the past, I found to get used to the rain. Because yeah. the rain, rain isn't uh, a verb there, it's a noun. Yeah. So uh, I... Maybe I confused Paula because I said you use a gerund after. Not always. You can say, I found it difficult to get used to the weather, for example, or the rain in this, in this, in this case. Well, the gerund was a verb though mm, it's mm. yeah i found it difficult to get used like, yeah to the rain. yeah we don't need a verb no. okay nice paula yes find found well done okie doke very good okay uh Get so used these, to um, yeah. these are some um, these are some things you would have to get used to if you move to Thailand. These are some cultural aspects, and I think they're mm. a little bit different to life in Italy or France or, or Spain. So let's so, see what we would find it difficult to get used to. So greetings are commonly made by passing, pressing hands together and bowing the heads. How are you, Carl? 
The gesture is called the Y. <laughs> Twice a day, the national anthem is broadcast through the major cities. True. Wow. You know that when the national anthem plays, everybody just stands still for the entire song. <laughs> And nobody can move. So if you're in a train station or in a really busy place during that time, everybody just stops doing everything and they wait for the anthem to play. And then once the anthem is over, they just keep on going about the business. That's so weird. It's surreal. It's a really surreal experience because then you're there and you're like, do I have to stop? Do I do I move? Do, what do I do? <laughs> because you're not sure if you are supposed to fall follow it or not <laughs> better to follow them yeah. now every day is associated Definitely. with a different color the most noticeable is on mondays when people dress in yellow uh true because yellow is the color of mm. the king touching someone's head is offensive highly offensive so even with children you know it's very natural to ch touch children's heads but uh the head is the most sacred part of the body for them and so it's uh it's not a good sign if you if you touch someone's head uh -huh. and uh, the feet are the opposite so the feet as well are really really uh, are the lowest part of the body and so for example you have to remove your shoes before entering people's house temples or even some shops uh, one time i got uh, in a lot of trouble in a market because um i saw something that was on the floor and i pointed at it but with my foot i didn't touch it or anything but i just gestured towards it with my foot and the guy went, yeah, he got really angry at me because of this. So, yeah, be careful not to do that. All right. Well, there is some, I think there are some questions there, Rosa, if, we, if you click yes. again. What would you, probably, what would you find it? There we go. Yeah. Which custom would you take some getting used to? Which, sorry. Uh, which would you, uh, which would get on your nerves, and which would you get accustomed to easily? Mm. Yeah. So uh, with the first one, you can answer. So the subject, for example, um, you know, uh, bowing my head would take some getting used to, or bowing my head would be easy to to get used to depending on you um i think for me it would be maybe it would be difficult to remember the first few times but then i think i would i would get used to it quite quickly which uh, one sorry bowing my head uh. No, it's just something you do straight off. I don't. I think that the most difficult one is uh, the touching someone's head, especially with uh, children. What do you think, guys? Write in the comments which would which would be difficult to get used to. Try, practice using this new this new language because it's not particularly easy. This is quite. This is some higher level stuff that we're looking at today. This is in um, le level 11 that we look at, um, get used to, which is quite a surprise, really, because we use it quite a lot. We use this language quite, quite a yeah, lot. Yeah, you're surprised it's not uh, explained before. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, used to in the past has a different meaning as well. That's in yeah, explained in level 9, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Who's going Some to write a comment? So it would be easy for me to get used to blah, 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 or I would find it hard to get used to la, la, la. <laughs> la, la, la. La, la, la. <laughs> my, my dot, dot, dot. I think I would be able to get 
I think I would get accustomed to taking my shoes off um, before entering someone's house because it's it's what we do in England as well. We usually uh, take our shoes off. It's quite hard in the shops, though. You know, just if you're on the streets in the shops, you really don't think about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes. Stopping for the national anthem would be a bit difficult to get used to. Very good, Antonio. Very, very good. How about you, Paolo? What do you think? What would be difficult uh get used to that it would yeah yeah i think the the national anthem is a bit of a culture shock for me i couldn't imagine yeah. god god save the queen being played twice a day yeah. in the uk no yeah. Right, maybe we should continue, and if Paula comments, then we'll 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 read it out. Yeah. All right. So here we can uh, practice our prepositions. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have, if guys, if Antonio, Paula, you can write the number and the preposition you think is correct. That would be really great. I'll read them out in the meantime. So, although I can't really boast. My level of English, I thought I'd have enough to get by uh, when I moved to Australia. Number two, you must prepare mm, a very thorough visa examination if you're thinking of moving to Moscow. Be sure not to drink water, mm, the tap in Guatemala. Partly, it's normal for locals in rural villages of India to stare mm, foreign travelers. Maldivian people insist on in providing the best hospital. Nice. I find it okay. So we got okay. an answer from Pal. I find it difficult to get used to yellow clothes on Monday. Okay. Very well, good. If you're very good, Paula, just... you can say, Yeah, I would find exactly. it difficult. Yeah, just to, because it, it's not something that you do normally, <laughs> that would be present simple, yeah. but it's hypothetically, hypothetical. yeah, 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 well done, Paula, good, good job for using the get used to, okay, I think we need to explain to boast, although I can't really boast, it means to, uh, to talk about something in, um, in a boastful way, like, ah, oh, look at my level of English. My level of English is fantastic. It's better than yours. Yours. I'm, I'm, I'm the mm. best. This is boasting or bragging. And you can boast about anything. Boast. Brag. Yeah. Uh, show off. I, I, I read, I read 1,000 pages in a day. Yeah. I bet nobody can read me the thousand pages in one day. I mean, that's, that's, this is boasting. Okay. Be, be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> to be nice. Exactly. It's very annoying. To boast, brag, show off. Yeah. Um, All right. So Antonia says number one up, number two, two, four, number three from four, at five on. Okay, interesting. Good effort. How many do you think we, he's got there? Mm. Mm. Number three, yes. Number four, yes. Two, two, yes, as well. And number five, yes. Yeah. All right. Oh, yes, I didn't read number two. Yeah, 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 number good. Two. So just the first one. Okay, so try again for the first one. Ah, there's also thorough there, a very thorough visa examination. How do you pronounce it, Rosa? God, all right, so... Th thorough. Yeah, I was just trying to write it down. All right, so... Uh, thorough. Okay, yeah. Uh, the Americans pronounce it. 
thorough, or thorough, thorough. It means deep, a deep, uh, or a, yeah, intensive. Accurate. Deep. Yeah, accurate. Is it th is thorough accurate? Uh, so yeah, yeah, a thorough check, for example, a deep, a thorough clean. I guess not miss not missing any any yes, dots I, or I don't know if accurate's the word I want to maybe not. Um, I think precise perhaps. Precise. Hmm, precise is probably better actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Precise, yeah. All right, so uh Paula, make sure you write the number next to it, otherwise um Okay. Well, but boast, boast is to boast about. Yeah. You usually boast about something, and you must mm -hmm. prepare. Oh, okay, Paula. On all right. So it's actually boast about number two. Prepare for water yeah. from the tap. Stay Can you drink? Yeah. Foreigners Sorry, and insist on. Oh, to, to stare. Do you, do you guys know what to stare means as well? Yeah. That means that is to stare. <laughs> it's to look intensively and for a long time. You stare at someone. Uh, Italians do this a lot. Actually, they, you know, while they're smoking a cigarette, they will, they will just stare at you <laughs> as you're, as you're really? walking down the road. They do. Hmm. I've never noticed. Like, what, what did I, what did I do? <laughs> the... Yes, Antonio, exactly, to stare at someone. Excellent, well stare. done, Antonio. Yeah. Okay. Have we got time nice. for a bit more? Um, mm, we've got two minutes. What's on the, ah, okay, there we go. I think this, this question, so the last questions before okay. is just using the, the prepositions that we've just practiced. The one, the slide before, Rosa, slide before. Okay. All right. In which countries do you think you'd have to prepare for the most rigorous visa checks? Which nations insist on providing high levels of hospitality? And can you think of any any other places where it is recommended only to drink from bottled water sources? Hmm. Yeah, I can definitely think of somewhere for yeah. number three. <laughs> like half the world. Yeah, India in Part particular. Yeah, India is probably the biggest um, one. Um, Africa as well. Mm -hmm. You can't drink from the taps. So. Asia, Asia in general. I mean, it depends where you are. If you're in a city, it's not that bad. But if you're in a village, then it's probably the water from the river, which is not ideal. Yeah. Um, and the most vi re prepare for the most vi rigorous visa checks. The one I have experienced is Singapore. That's just crazy. Really? Yeah. They're very strict, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um on the visa. <laughs> Big capital red letters. It says, "Welcome to Singapore. Death penalty for drugs." <laughs> That's their visa, their entrance visa. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I was They're thinking like, America. No <laughs> yeah. I was thinking America you probably have have rigorous checks. Blimey. That's scary. Uh, levels of hospitality. I think that. You know, you get that in so many places. Mm. 
definitely India or Bangladesh or uh, I don't know. Those are the ones I've seen, but um, yeah, I think hospitality is pretty big in lots of places. All right, I think we should probably just revise quickly what we said today. Yeah. So we were talking about loss in translation, which means to, well, apart from losing the meaning, the actual literal meaning of words, it's also about a cultural aspect, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, you might not understand the person that you're talking to because whatever he said didn't really translate very well. Yeah. Um, or a gesture. In words yeah. and in, uh, in the actual idea, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Then uh, we said, I would or wouldn't be able to adapt to a different culture. Mm -hmm. You could also apply that uh, to get used to. I would be mm -hmm. able to get used to, or I wouldn't be able to get used to. Or I could. Um, yeah. Wouldn't. We also used it in the past tense. I, I had to get used to. And... Um. Then we looked at some expressions. So we saw driving someone nuts means to annoy. Have a yeah. ball, have fun. Mm -hmm. Life of Riley, comfortable life. Yeah. To Living grate life on Riley. means to annoy. Yeah, to grate get on someone. To, yeah, so get used to is to become accustomed to, mm -hmm. familiar with something, I guess. Exactly. Um, Do you remember the word that means to talk about something arrogantly? Oh, to boast. Yeah, that's right. And the other word we saw was thara, which is a precise... Mm. Or precise, yeah. Um, investigation, I guess. Yeah, a thorough investigation or a, a mm. thorough clean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Intense? I don't know. Yeah, um, exactly. Could be different. And then uh, to stare, to look at someone inten intensively for a long time. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, thank you very much for joining us, Paolo Antonio, everyone else. Uh, hopefully you're all well, and uh, yes, take care, everyone. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Have a good weekend. Yes, have a good weekend.